Have you ever seen a pie chart where one of the slices explodes into another pie chart and one of the slices in that pie chart explodes into another pie chart, sort of showing this cascading type of visualization for data? There is a better way to show those kinds of relationships. And on today's episode of the One Chart at a Time video series, Amber Thomas from The Pudding is gonna talk about the Sankey diagram. And the Sankey diagram she's gonna show you is one of my favorite projects that The Pudding has put out. It's super fun. It's super interactive. It lets you explore the data. I have actually a similar one included in my new book that comes out uh, in, in just a little bit. So I hope you'll be able to take a look at this video, understand how a Sankey diagram works and how to read it, and maybe even apply it to your own data. Hey everyone, I'm Amber, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit today about Sankey diagrams. Now, a Sankey diagram is a way to show flow of things from one system to another. Often they're used to show the flow of energy within a system uh, in things like engineering and physics, um, but you can also use them to show the flow of people moving from one country in the world to another, the flow of <laughs> students from various college majors to other college majors, basically anything that moves in one direction <laughs> from one thing to another consistently. Um, and I think like many charts, this one makes the most sense when you can kind of see it. So I'm going to start showing a few examples that hopefully will help illustrate this topic. So I actually really love this basic, simple uh, Sankey diagram from Google Charts. Uh, of course, it doesn't have labels, which is what makes it so simple. So what you can see is the flow of things from state A and B to states X, Y, and Z. Now, the kind of cool thing about Sankey diagrams, again, it's showing that flow of things from one state to another, um, but it also allows you to see how many things traveled along that path. So if you look at the thickness of these bars here, that will tell you uh, how many things followed along that path. So if this was looking at people, there are more people that went from state A to X then people that went from state B to X because this path is much narrower than this path. Now, again, you can use Sinky diagrams for all sorts of things. Um, one of my favorites was actually done by a few of my colleagues at The Pudding, and it's called the Gyllenhaal Experiment. And this actually shows the flow of letters that make up a word, particularly words like celebrity names, which are often misspelled. So the way that this works, is you're presented with a celebrity, in this case, Mark McGuire, uh, and you have to try to spell her name. And I actually do not remember at all how to spell his name, so um, not a sports person, bear with me. I think it's something like that. And you can see as I typed, a Sankey diagram was drawn on. In this case, um, every letter you add adds another potential state. So the word can go from M to C, and a lot more users pressed C than whatever this other letter was, probably G. Oh. I don't know what other people were thinking when they're uh, A maybe, yeah. Um, and as you go, you can see all of the places that uh, people have branched off in the spelling of this. And when you think you've got it, you can say you did. I spelled it wrong, but that's okay. Other people got it right. And again, you can see the thickness of these um, paths represents how many people who took this quiz thought that was the next letter in the, the sequence. Um, a few things to consider when you're making a chart like this is that if we actually mapped out all of the different ways that all of these 13 and a half thousand people <laughs> might have tried to spell this name, um, this chart would probably be very unreadable because there would be a lot of paths that only one or ten people followed. They would be very small and it would be really hard to read. So what Russell and Matt did when they were constructing this piece is they made cutoffs of only showing the most commonly traveled paths for each uh, word. So that is Sankey Diagrams. They're a really cool tool and I hope this was helpful. And thanks, Amber, for that great explanation of how Sankey diagrams work and that great piece from the pudding on how to spell some of your favorite athletes and actors and actresses' last names. 
Go and explore that piece if you can. It's really a lot of fun. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks so much for watching.